This is an easy Mod Podge screen printing DIY at home method and we're going to use various supplies because I want to do two different methods. Most of these supplies came from Dollar Tree. The pantyhose is the splatter screen, the cosmetic wedges, and either of your Mod Podges. You'll need your acrylic paints of your choice. We'll be using fabric medium. You'll need a clothing iron to heat set. I'm going to use my embroidery hoop on any kind of hoop or way of stretching it. My print of the little truck. you want some paint brushes as well. A piece of cardboard covered in wax paper. I also have a platter here that I've just placed some wax paper on. That will protect the underneath of your textile, whether it be cloth, a t-shirt, and I have a tote here as well as a t-shirt. Welcome to the Dandy Soap DIY channel. Thank you for joining me on this collaboration for the boys. There's a playlist link in the description box down below. If you click on it, you'll be able to visit all the creators who came together for the boys. Now in mine, it's not just for the boys, it's for the girls too. Now my dad was my great American hero, a mechanic all his life. I spent the majority of my time underneath the hood of something so that I could be side by side with my best friend. So this collaboration is not only for the boys, it's for the girls. So stay tuned. So I'm going to use the splatter screen first. I've taken my print and I've laid it underneath it and I have my splatter screen turned to where the beveled edge is facing me and the smoother side is on the bottom because I want that screen as close to my textile as possible. Now to make mine simple, I'm going to actually use a black magic marker and I'm going to draw on this screen my pattern and I'm just tracing it out. Now once you've got your pattern traced on there, you can actually take the screen up and you can still make it out. If your eyes are bad, you could technically laminate this so you can reuse it, but I can see that pretty good. I'm going to remove my truck. And this tote got damaged, and I was able to get these on clearance, and I thought that would be a great thing to do this on. And what you're going to do is you're going to paint the screen with Mod Podge so that your truck is still there and exposed through the screen. Is you're creating a barrier that you do not want paint to flow through on the outside perimeter of your drawing. And that's why you'll need like a um, brush or a sponge or something. Now that's where your board underneath the fabric would come into play. And when you first trace this out, you could use your wax paper if you're afraid of getting Mod Podge bled through and they'll just let you know how fast the passage will be. And I only need to put Mod Podge on this area that's outlining the truck. So you don't have to do the entire outer screen unless you feel like you might get a little paint happy and go beyond that. So since I want that window to be cut, I don't want paint to flow through that window, I'm going to put Mod Podge on it as well. And this will take you a moment, but once it dries, you can reuse this screen over and over and over. Now on the splatter screen, once you've got your Mod Podge on there and it's dried, it should resemble something like this. So you can see the areas that the Mod Podge has sealed up. So now let's try our screen print. It says two parts paint to one part of the medium. And you don't want too much of the medium because what it will do is gum up your uh, screen print. So now I've got my medium mixed into my paint, and since I've already got this on my brush, I'm going to use it. So we want to keep that screen against whatever we're doing, and you don't want to move it. You want to keep it down to where it's against whatever it is that you're screen printing. So I'm just going to hold mine down so that the paint can get through the screen. And that's why you want to Mod Podge it. That way you don't have to be like perfect. That's what screen printing is. It's, it's really a method that just gives everything that vintage look and feel. And it's super fun. I mean, guys, I'm having a ball. This is awesome. Okay, I've got all my paint on my screen. 
and I've worked everything through. Let's get ready for the reveal and see what we got. And you'll want to roll it up really easy when you do that. I hope you guys can make this out pretty good to where it's been. It has that vintage look to it. Now the sponging would do different. You would want to heat set this um, while it's wet. While it's wet. So right now it's real good and saturated. So you could leave it a moment and just let the paint settle down. Okay, now I've let my truck dry a little bit and, you know, it's touchable. And like I said, you'll want to make sure that you heat set this at whatever temperature your fabric stands. But make sure you put you a piece of wax paper on top of it just in case there's any paint that should lift up that maybe where the areas were a little thicker than others. Um, once it's heat set, after 24 hours, it's ready to wash. So now we have our vintage truck on our tote. Now let's try the pantyhose method. Okay, so same thing with the pantyhose. I just cut the leg so that it would spread out further and then cut off the difference. So once again, I'm gonna take my black magic marker and I'm going to trace out my truck for the areas that I need Mod Podge on. And then for you ladies, if you're using your embroidery hoop like I am, I used some scotch tape right here to protect my hoop because I don't want to get Mod Podge on them. I took in the extra mile and taped it off. If this was a cheap embroidery hoop, no problem, which there's no such thing these days because everybody is using embroidery hoops and of course i don't want to get black magic marker on my hoop either just for a little extra detail you can do that too and just mod podge those areas if you're enjoying this video please give it a thumbs up lets me know you like it okay so once you get your mod podge on there just let it dry usually it takes two hours and if you use the splatter screen from dollar tree that we did a while ago Make sure you rinse it out immediately after you get your paint through the screen and you're done using it. Rinse it with cold water and kind of brush at it and set it aside and let it dry. And you can reuse it again because the permanent magic marker will forever be on there as well as the Mod Podge too. Okay, our Mod Podge is dried on our pantyhose and we're going to try this one. And I'm going to use this Dutch Blue since it has like a vintage color to it. And make sure that you've got your plate underneath it that's got the wax covering on it. Just in case you have bleed through on your fabric. And one part of the fabric medium to two parts of your paint. I'm going to mix that together. And this hole right here, if you try to use your uh, heat gun, that's you can expect that that is going to happen. If you try to fast forward the drying process. I, the pantyhose for, will just melt if they get too hot. So trying to use a heating gun was not a good idea because it made a rip in the pantyhose. Now, if you're new to my channel and you enjoy doing DIYs and crafts and all kinds of decor and just being creative and discovering new things, subscribe to the channel. I would love to have you as part of my DIY team. Okay, I got my paint on there. Once again, just pull it up very gently. Just roll it up. Okay, so we have our truck, and we've screen printed it, and it looks pretty good. It's got that vintage look to it. Once again, you'll let that dry. While it's still wet, you'll lay wax paper on there and heat set it with your iron to whatever your fabric setting is. Once you've set it with heat, be sure to wait 24 hours before washing it. Know that you can reuse your screens and just rinse them out with cool water. The pantyhose, however, might have to be replaced. And then here we are with the Vintage Totes, an excellent, perfect Christmas gift or upcoming birthday. The tote is just beautiful. We know not to overdo it with the paint when we're using the metal screen. And then, of course, with the pantyhose, turned out excellent.
Subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out on the next DIY creation. This is Elizabeth thanking you all for joining me for another DIY. Over and out.